Yesterday afternoon, I got the chance to sit down with Jenna and her sister Barbara at Blair House, which is the official guest house at the White House. It's where the whole Bush family is staying while they're here in Washington. And just like their grandfather, the girls were pillars of strength and all heart. I think we're both heartbroken. We, of course, expected our grandfather to pass away soon. He was 94 and yet it came as such a shock and we miss him already very much because he really was the center of our family and yet i think i also get a lot of joy knowing that he's with our grandmother now jenna over the years that i've known you you could barely speak of your grandparents without a tear how are you doing well we love them i mean i think the tears came from joy I, they gave us such unconditional love. I was looking through old pictures. And it amazes me that even though he had the weight of the world on his shoulders, we really never thought of him as anything besides our grandpa. And that joy that we had uh, on our faces as little girls was because he made us feel so special. On Monday, as the sun set over the Capitol, the nation began to bid farewell to our 41st president as the Bush family looked on, at times holding back tears, not just for a family in mourning, but for a grateful country, too. The beauty in it is that strangers stood on the side of the street in Washington, D.C., watching um, his casket go by and saluting him and waving. And that fills us up in our, in our sadness. Do you feel the love and respect that is being poured out for him this Absolutely. week? Absolutely. I'm shocked by how many people tell, have some memory of meeting him somewhere <laughs> and how they found him funny or how loving he was or how personable he was. And that's a really wonderful gift to us is that we get to hear all these other people's stories and how he touched their lives as well. How's your dad doing? He's okay. I think he gets a lot of peace knowing that my grandfather is with our grandmother and that he was looking forward to being reunited with her. And so I think that that brings him peace. He's writing the eulogy. He's given it to us. We, of course, Barbara and I are we never hold our opinions. We're like, that's great, but could you add a line like this? <laughs> Take this out. You're a tough critic. <laughs> well, we just, you know, we. how can you tell a man as giant as our grandpa was how much you love him? It's a tall order, and I think it's gonna be difficult. And I think he also wants to make sure that he can get through it himself without, you know, he lost his father and is also devastated, so to be able to get through the eulogy without breaking down is a, something else that he's working on. <laughs> Sounds like you all had some very precious time with him, particularly this summer. I mean, I, we didn't take it for granted because he, we knew we most likely this was going to be his last summer and we all knew that. And one of my favorite memories were my little girls singing Jesus Loves Me and watching my grandpa sing it. And every day, Mila and Poppy would say, let's go give Great Gampy a hug. When he passed away, and I said to Henry, and I didn't think she could hear me, like, I just can't believe this is happening right before Christmas. And Mila said, well, of course it's happening right before Christmas. Gampy had to get to Ganny so they could decorate their Christmas tree. And I thought, you know, from the mouth of babes, because they had never spent a Christmas apart and their whole 73 years, 74 years. So of course he wanted to be there. And she probably was like, come on, <laughs> time to come home. Was he reflective? Did he talk about just knowing that his life was coming to a close? He was reflective about my grandmother and I asked him if his heart was broken and he said yes. And then he looked at me and he said, do you think it'll feel worse than this? And it just, really got me. I mean, of course his heart was broken. He had lost the love of his life. And yet he also, whenever you asked him how he was doing, he would say, I couldn't be better. And so I think instead of talking about his time being limited, he just lived as much as he could. Which included watching Barbara get married just weeks ago at their longtime summer home in Kennebunkport, Maine. We decided to get married very quickly because we wanted to make sure my grandfather could be with us. He got dressed early and came 
downstairs early before the wedding so that he could see me in my wedding dress before we got married. What did he say when he saw you? He, well, he, one of the last things he said to me was that I've never looked so beautiful. A beautiful moment to cherish of a life well lived. Well, the girls have so many <laughs> memories, and in our next hour, they'll share more of them. And I think the fact that they have so many memory, many memories just speaks to how much time their grandfather gave him, even when, as Jenna says, he had the weight of the world on his shoulders. They just thought he was their grandfather. And listening to them talk about the Christmas tree and that yeah. imagery, and we're so close to Jenna, and we've seen her heart out there, but to watch Barbara talking about her wedding day like that, wow, that was beautiful, Savannah. Please, uh, Savannah. It was, and, and yeah, I was going to say Barbara had a lot of really special one-on-one -on -one time with her grandfather this summer, which she tells us about um, in, in our next piece, which is next hour. Wow, that was beautiful. Please, wow. Please pass along our love to yeah. JBH as well. I will. Please do. Big hugs. I will. I will. <laughs> All right. And by the way, Jenna's going to have even more in a special hour-long tribute. We're calling it a love letter to Gampy. You do not want to miss this. It's Saturday night, 8, 7 central, right here on NBC, guys. Right. Okay, we're going to go redo our makeup. All right. <laughs> Samantha, thank you. That was really beautiful. Wow. Uh.